the most common flu in the practice room. We all catch it, myself included. Pay attention when this happens because you may be doing it in a certain way in one tempo and completely different when you're doing it slowly. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. My name is Ferdi Talan. I'm sure you've heard of stop motion animation where pictures after pictures of an object with slightly different placement in every frame are played back really fast so they appear to be moving. This is a somewhat similar concept with practicing slowly. The difference between playing slow and fast is the amount of space in between the notes. When you're playing slowly, the spaces are bigger but the speed in which you enter the key stays the same in every tempo, fast in. And you use the exaggerated space to go to the next note and rest and ready there. And as you build up tempo, the spaces will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So does your hand movement. I'm going to start with the left hand because the notes are further apart and therefore easier to see. This is called spacing. The point of sound is very close to the surface of the key, so after the sound happened, there's no point to continue going down. Wait and rest on the next note. In other words, you're constantly moving, like little dots with big spaces between them. If you also slow down the speed in which you enter the key and continue to go down even after the sound had happened instead of waiting at the next note, you will always end up striking the coming note from the air instead of from the key. This is the equivalent of running on sand. It will be an uphill battle to achieve your desired tempo. By now, we have discussed quite a bit that not every note are to be played equally even though they have the same value. This has to be translated when you're practicing slowly. The indentations, the inflections, the grouping and the phrasing has to be exactly the way that you're going to do it in tempo, just with much larger space in between. Sometimes it is tempting to be a diligent student and fake your way through an exercise so that you could feel good about doing something. Well, don't. I am the master of making myself believe that I have done a module correctly when reality is I haven't. And the price I pay going forward to trying to fix that is way more than if I were to do it correctly from the get-go. In this case, you really wanted to make sure that you are resting on the next note. Not just being there, but still having your weight or still hanging on to the previous note, but being there with the full weight of your arm on it. Similar to the stop motion, you're creating a picture perfect for each moment. This is key when building up tempo. Be patient. 
Don't do it slow once and then try it full speed ahead the next time. Our body is intelligent, but the rate in which it will absorb the information that we put in is different for each and every one of us. So get to know how you function and be kind. Allow more time if you do need it instead of being frustrated because so-and-so can do it in two days or something like that is also what you practice in the practice room. I hope this will send you off with a fresh perspective of what practicing slow is about. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for topics that you would like to be discussed, please write me at joyofpracticing at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time.